Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode, we will bring you our favorite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more. You create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to our episode this week. We have got such a juicy topic for you. We are talking about success without the burnout. Yes, please. And we have a very special guest with us for this topic today, Dr. Yvette Ankra. Yvette, welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, I'm so excited that you're here and we're getting to have this conversation. So by way of introduction, I'm going to share Yvette's bio so everyone can understand why I'm so excited that we've, we've got you here with us today and that we're having this conversation. So Dr. Yvette Ankara, MBE, is a transformational coach, consultant and trainer. She primarily works with high achieving women to get success without burnout. Yvette is passionate about ensuring people have the optimum environment, tools and skills to thrive. And she believes that this starts from the inside and working in a way which builds sustainable and profitable businesses and careers without the overwhelm, stress and burnout. It's such a huge thing. Mm -hmm. And she has over 20 years of business experience, is an accredited NLP master coach and has a PhD in sociology. She won a Microsoft O2 Award for Business in 2013, was shortlisted for Best Coach at the Best Business Women's Awards in 2015, and was awarded an MBE for her work with Women in Business in 2017. Congratulations. (laughs) And a huge, huge welcome. Brilliant. Thank you, Louisa. That's, uh, yeah, so that's what I've been up to for the last few years. (laughs) Just a few things. (laughs) It's huge, absolutely huge. And so, you know, thank you for being here and sharing all your wisdom and expertise from this conversation today. So let's go back a few years. What made you start your own business in the first place? Go out for punishment? No. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'd always wanted to do something. I've always sort of freelanced on something on the side. So I remember leaving uni and getting my first sort of proper job, as you call it. And I was bored. I was incredibly bored. So I'd be freelancing. So I've always done multiple things at once. And then I said, you know what? I actually want my own business. And the catalyst was becoming a mother. Motherhood is lovely, but I am not cut out to sit at home with a small child. It just wasn't for me. And I would go to these mother and baby groups and I'll be talking to these women like, she's got these amazing business ideas about it. Okay, child like <laughs> And I found that there wasn't a space for these women. So I actually initially started my work with women with smaller micro businesses, mothers, and helping them get off the ground. And then as I was doing more and more of that as a business coach, I realized there were some blocks that people were having. So I could write as many plans as I liked. I could coach them for all of that, but then they weren't always implementing them and we'll just get stopped. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I kind of had discovered NLP in my own personal development journey. And I decided to go and extend my training. Mm. And that was when I moved into the full transformational space in terms of my work. But it was all these things were happening at a time when I was also incredibly unwell. And I, as I said, I always did lots of things. So I didn't know how to not do lots of things. And becoming a mother and still doing lots of things, I suddenly find myself really ill. Mm. I'd launched a business, launched a network. I ran a network as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had a two-year-old and I was in the middle of my PhD. 
just a few things that <laughs> wow this is the thing just a few mm. things and I got diagnosed with a condition called fibromyalgia Gosh. so if you don't know what it is it's a condition that causes a lot of fatigue but also a lot of pain so you get a muscle pain it affects your cognition it affects lots of aspects of you so I was juggling all of this at the same time and I was kind of thinking oh, it's busy and you know it it really wasn't so you know that ju- learning journey of my own care and my own needs was also explored during that time when I was doing my NLP training and it was when I was doing that training that I actually managed to shift my fibro wow that so is huge mm. when I talk about the need for self-care the need mm. to look after yourself to avoid burnout I do it from a place of I was there right I was <laughs> doing it all still thinking I could do absolutely everything you know in heels with back flips you know the ginger Rogers kind of <laughs> statement you know she didn't Fred the third did but with heels and back flips and I was this superwoman mm. and I believe that that that's who I was and so my business does reflect my own journey but it's kind of that start was about helping mums that's where I was at that time and then moving into what's the blocks and then moving to actually there's something deep and fundamental going on here with a lot of the women that I'm meeting and there's and, and that part of that work was when that started to really come out and me really talk about that journey mm. and embrace that side of of the work that I I now love, love, love. <laughs> do you know I think so many people will relate to your story in relation to trying to be superwoman and you know it's I think it's a sort of condition of a lot of high achievers thinking mm. that success means that we have to do everything often at the risk of our our health not really paying attention to how our body is is speaking to us and and then like you were saying about all the blocks that can come up for people is often it can and certainly I see this in my work as well is the fear of burnout after you've had it is enough to stop you from wanting to kind of work harder or feel like you might have to kind of motivate yeah. motivate yourself to 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 push to push mm. further or not to want to push further of course but to be able to move forward because the fear of having to kind of push is what yeah because I mean. sometimes people often fear failure but the fear of success is also another thing because it comes at another cost it's like well what does that mean for me do I have to keep showing up and shining all the damn time what am I gonna do can I switch off can I stop am I allowed to stop and what does it mean if I'm not working at 100 miles an hour? What does that say about who I am? Because often, I achieve it here, your, you know, your identity um, is linked to a lot of those things. And I, I you know, you could call myself the recovering overachiever, but now I said I'm recovered. I'm yes. I'm recovered. I'm not recovering. I'm recovered. <laughs> I, I don't need to, to do that. There's nothing left to prove. Mm. There's nothing left to, to push for in that way, in a negative way. It's what's the energy behind that drive? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think this is such a huge conversation for, for so many people. What was the, um, as you're diving into this, and obviously because you're recovered now. Yeah. <laughs> I love <job>. it. <laughs> this is a call out to everybody who wants to be recovered, <laughs> recovered from this. Um, you, you talk a lot about, I know you talk a lot about, you know, um, things that can help people um, in relation to, not burning out and to be able to have the success without juggling you know 50 million things and Mm -hmm. going at uh, 500 miles an hour what um when we talk about self-care a lot but actually what is self-care because it can mean different things to different different people yeah I actually think we need to invent a new word because the word itself has so many connotations let's do that here yeah (laughs) if we can you know readers and listeners please coming with a new word or term because some people think of it in quite negative terms. It's mm-hmm. people think it's something that's overindulgent or like luxurious or expensive and um, something that's all about me, 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 me. And it's the spa day, it's the champagne. And it's, you know, this view of a life that's almost pampered luxury. And when people hear self-care and they think that, okay, that's okay. The other extreme is just, you know, being able to do basics for yourself. But what it is, is how we look after ourselves, mind, body and soul on a daily basis. And that is self-care and self-care is really not selfish because part of self-care is about how you connect with others how you interact your relationship that is part of your self-care and you know when I teach this 
I, you know, look at different aspects of it. So from, you know, your career, or your business, the psychological, the emotional, the physical. So, you know, what we put in our bodies, what we do to our bodies. Yeah. How many people are dehydrated on a daily basis? Right? <laughs> Most adults are dehydrated. Mm. And that small bit of dehydration affects your cognition, affects your muscles, it affects everything. We're on these, you know, cameras all day in these environments. So there's lots of, you know, energy coming at us in different ways. How we protect our energy, how we look after ourselves, how much sleep we do or do not get, right? Mm. All of those things are important, as well as having an outlet, someone to speak to, you know, some way of releasing the emotions from our body. I don't, you know, there's no negative or positive emotion. They're all emotions. It's all energy. How do we use that? You know, anger is just as important as joy. They've got their place, right? Yes. Push down anger and just say, because mm. it's only if it's a good emotion or a happy emotion, we're going to promote that. No, all of them are valid and all of them should be expressed and engaged with. So when we suppress and don't engage with it, we develop problems within ourselves. Mm. And then our relationships to people and our connection to something that is more than us as well. All of that is part of your self-care. And what you find is if a part of it is lacking, that's when you start to see the depletion and the problems coming in. If you're not taking care of your physical health, your emotional health, or you've got difficult relationships. Um, and by relationships, I mean in terms of friendships, your intimate relationships, your children, if you have them, parents, all of that. If you have quite difficult with relationships with a lot of people, that's going to be draining. That takes away your energy. Yeah. Gotcha. So all of that is part of it. Giving is part of it volunteering is part of your self-care you know so there's lots of ways we can look at how we look after ourselves and i love a spa day right <laughs> me too love spa day. i love a spa day but that's not just it mm. and when i was doing my self-care in the bad old days right <laughs> my self-care would be work 12 hour days seven, you know, almost seven days a week and then eventually have a spa day and think that was it that was okay and I'm, I'm yeah. done. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. What and tick? I've done back. self-care. Yeah. Tick. <laughs> and then go back and do exactly the same thing all over again. Yeah. There's so much more to it. I love how you've just pulled everything together in terms of the importance of all the different aspects that mm. make up us as, as human beings and needing to take care of each aspect. And it's yeah. not the spa day, the meditation only, or, or eating nutritious food, which perhaps is kind of the, the first things that people will yeah initially go to when they sort of think about self-care how are you taking care of yourself am I exercising am I eating good food um and that you know they might sort of and have I got a spa day <laughs> yeah you know I should live on my holiday you know that would be it I'd be like right when's the next holiday coming up right and that's what you'd live for and so mm. many people do that because the rest of the time they are treating themselves in not a very good way and hoping that that thing will stop it it's like you know you've got a gaping wound and it's oozing and pouring a little plaster is not going to do it no it's a bit more radical yeah it is a complete kind of lifestyle change in, in that respect isn't it and what you feel is in important taking self-care importantly and really understanding all those different components yeah it's treating yourself like you matter because you do yes. you know yeah and it's important and we don't until it's critical sometimes Mm, mm. and it's you know the wake up call well I, I know that one myself as well Yvette like having had my I you know you're like oh your story could be like my story in that you know in the juggling juggling yeah. act and um you know pushing through and keeping going doing yeah. the let's have a spa day is my self-care thing and mm -hmm. you know it was after a bout of shingles and post-chronic viral fatigue that I was mm -hmm. like hang on a second this yeah. isn't working for me anymore <laughs> and the thing is the signs are there quite early right mm. and my signs were there from from quite a young age you know and the whispering was going on and I was like yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. and then it was really? like will you sit down <laughs> yeah but by that point I'd really depleted myself and by that point you know I was in the space where I there was days I couldn't walk, you know, mm. I was in the middle of a PhD and I had to almost teach myself to read again because I couldn't hold the information in. Toddlers are hard work at the best of times and trying to do this with a toddler. And I didn't take the medication because it meant that I couldn't function around him. 
so it was like okay what do I do yeah and my first instinct was to fight every step of the way (laughs) and ignore it ah interesting and how did that work out (laughs) not very well (laughs) so round one five (laughs) rows okay okay round two round two we called a truce Okay, good. Oh, think, good. You didn't go for like five rounds. I uh, know that round one lasted a long time though. I'm 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 quite determined. <laughs> no, round two was okay, you're my self-care partner. When mm. you flare up, it means I need to slow down. I love that. So really listening to your body. Until we got to the last part when as I said I was doing my training and it was I don't need you anymore. Oh, I've gone all goosebumpy. Yeah. And that was when I let it go. That's incredible. And that was, yeah, it's a very interesting journey. Yeah, that's really incredible. And I hope it gives hope to people that may be experiencing things to know that there is working with yourself and finding that way so that you can move through these. And like you said, you made made it your self-care partner and to be able to think, actually, I don't need you anymore. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, because... For me, I had to learn that lesson. And I like people not to have to go through that level of pain. Yeah. Personally, <laughs> you know? I did it for you. Let me shortcut. Um, yes. Very you generous know. of you. Yeah. 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 But because of that, that's why I talk about self-care. That's why I talk about burnout, because I did not know any other way of being. Mm. I didn't know how else to do what I did because I'd never learned any other way. It's drive, 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 drive because that's what I do I didn't have an alternative way of being yeah and I'd done that from a very young age and I just continued until I couldn't actually physically do it anymore and so now am I ambitious and driven yes very much so but without driving me into the ground yeah my perception is different my choices are different the way I engage with things very different Mm. do I get good results yes but I've learned a different way there's alternative ways of being and it might sound quite simplistic but when you live like that the whole time you can't see anything else that's all you see and that's all you know so therefore that's what you do oh exactly yeah absolutely and I think society and schools certainly kind of push funnel people into this way of that's the kind of illusion of what success looks like Mm. and then people are you know reverting to all sorts of methods and bad habits to try and keep themselves going yeah um because they perhaps because they've got this illusion of self-care not being actually a superpower to be able to support your body and and listening like you were saying about listening to the whispers yeah that is my superpower yeah my superpower is self-care Mm. So I took off that superwoman cape and <laughs> let it to life and dance around the flames because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't serving me. Mm. Mm. It really wasn't serving me. And this is still a journey. You know, I haven't said by any means that I'm, a, I'm done. It's great and everything. Pressure and life will still happen. I mean, hey, we had a pandemic, right? You know, things will yep. crop up and then you're kind of thinking, OK, this is interesting. Now, where do I go with this and how do I manage this? And you still have to find other ways and be willing and open to say okay I've got to do something different now and I'm not sure what to do but let's just know that it's not going to be whatever I've done before so we're going to find something else exciting times I love it Mm -hmm. and you must have seen this um, a lot then because with what you speak about is is the impact of of Mm self-care on people's success so how would you what would you say you know how does self-care it might be an obvious question to ask but I feel like just to draw it out for our listeners how does self-care actually impact success oh immensely (laughs) immensely because when you are good when you are in a space where you are energized you feel well you're able to just work at your optimum but you make great decisions Mm. right that's the first thing when you're overwhelmed stressed and underneath things you actually make very good decisions (laughs) right so you're making decisions from a place of wholeness and wellness and intentional Mm. you know it's a very different place when it's quick reactions firefighting flames running away from different energy to actually I choose this this is the direction I want to go in I'm okay with this and you know what if I fall, 
I will still be able to get up again because you're resilient. And that's the whole thing. Self-care enables you to be resilient, enables you to be flexible and bounce back. Yes. Being like a weeble that wobbles but doesn't fall yeah. down for anyone that remembers the weebles. Yes. <laughs> and it may and it also enables you to treat yourself with care and compassion and love. So when you do fall, it's not, oh, I'm so stupid and all of that. No. Mm. You use a very different energy towards yourself. And that starts from you taking care of who you are. Yeah. And you get to say no a lot. It's not my favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> because you know if it's not aligned to you, if it's not what you need what what's worked for you you can say no without caveats or anything else and it's okay and you feel okay saying no you don't feel oh you can say mm. oh or when you say yes you say yes with all of you as well yes not having that push pull feeling which is draining in itself where it's like hang on I've said yes but should it have really been a no exactly because you're mm. you know once you're in that space you're quite grounded you're quite solid and you know like that we will she pushed somebody and they're kind of thing they will just go but this mm. one's like actually I might not even move I might just be very solid because I am strong with who I am where I am and I trust myself okay you know all of that comes from how you care, care for yourself yes it's self-care and it's tied in with self-love and like you were saying trust being able to really fully 100% trust yourself so that mm. you not in that questioning again which is exhausting when you've got all this kind of energy that's kind of leaving your body because you're trying to take care of everybody else is actually it's being in that space of I've got to fill up my cup first before yeah I do anything for for and what we should be looking at is the overflowing cup rather than the cup with the dregs at the bottom that's what you (laughs) you right (laughs) what you should do fill up the cup overflow don't give them overflow all right yeah it's a beautiful place to be in rather than the bits at the bottom that no one really wants to talk about yeah. <laughs> which really mean you need to go to bed and uh, start to fill your well, cup up you, again if you're there yeah, and if you get to that point that's already a dangerous place to be mm. even if you're halfway full that's you know and the cup can be refilled but if you get to the point where it's scraping at the bottom it takes a lot longer to fill it that's such a good point it's easier to top it up isn't it rather than yes. to fill, fill exactly it. so yeah. more work from topping up topping up fill it top it up top it up spill over the edges top it up top it up that's <laughs> a great way to be right but if we get to that empty and you're hearing the sort of sound you know because like ding, 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 there's nothing, there's no slashing, there's nothing. that's harder to work from yeah yeah yeah. You mentioned about um, developing emotional resilience. This is something I also talk about a lot because it is so important for everybody, but also on the entrepreneurial journey. Oh yeah, <laughs> the roller coaster. Uh, and and for, you know, from, I guess from your perspective, what do you see? What's the role that you see mindset playing in in self care? Mindset is everything. <laughs> this, right? Mm. How you think will influence how you act. So you know that was NLP right yeah <laughs> you know so for those that know neurolinguistic programming it's it's all about you know your your thoughts what what you go into that computer brain of yours and then what comes out in terms of your actions and behaviors and habits so if your mindset is one of quite fixed and quite rigid and this is how things are and this is how I and I can't move and change and if this happens therefore I am this but that impacts everything about how you see yourself, what happens to you, how you respond to crises, and especially around emotional resilience. Mm. You know, if you believe yourself to be this person, so high achiever, I should be able to do this thing with ease because I'm amazing and brilliant. Yeah. Right? And if it means it's difficult, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> and therefore I fail. Yeah. And therefore, I am not a good person. And this means that my life will always be miserable and I will never succeed at anything. You can see how you go down that path. <laughs> I think a lot of people will be going, yep, I've taken myself down that rabbit hole. Right. Okay. Know, so mm-hmm. I would say, get out of the warrant. <laughs> <laughs> Put your paws above the, the parapet, so to speak. But once you kind of go down that and you start believing that you are these things, you can start to create beliefs that become embedded. And they impact what you do and the choices you make and the things that you achieve because you believe I am this person. Mm. 
And those actions mean that this is what happens to me in my life. But you've created those. They're not true. It's belief. Right? And that's why this mindset is quite critical. Mm. So if it's a case of, I can't fail, I can never fail, never become an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first part, right? Don't start, yes. Yeah, that's the start, time, right? Because you'll get a yeah. shock of your life quite quickly, right? <laughs> so, you know, if that belief is there, and it, then when something does happen, when you do fall, because you will at some point, getting up will be really, really hard. And it will feel incredibly difficult. And it's not the falling because we're all going to fall and we can sit there. And we can wallow in self-pity for a bit. And I think it's important to sometimes have your your wail and cry and gnash of teeth and moan and complain, whatever you want to do. Because sometimes it's necessary and we need to do that. Hmm. But it's the what next? What did I learn? What will I do? How do I ensure that this doesn't happen again? Or if it does happen again, what will I do differently? What's my learnings? Then how do I then get up? And move through it yeah so that that's the thing that happens yeah. it's the so moving key it. such key wisdom there yeah yeah it is and, isn't it and it's that bit it comes back to that bit that you were saying around all the emotions being mm-hmm. equally important to feel yeah. and to express and it's yeah. not just up oh, you know you mentioned about anger and joy and often particularly possibly for women you know suppress your anger mm-hmm. um can be uh, you know i have a lot of conversations with people that do find it hard to express anger because of whatever may have happened as children experiences along the way um and therefore then judgments that they may then make if they do have these feelings that they don't quite know what to what to do and that's why i say they're all equally valid and they're all there because emotions get emotions give you information right they tell you what's going on with you they let you know what's happening Mm -hmm. and so by ignoring them you're just going to push them inside of you and they're still there. They just that. <laughs> yeah. you know, they're cooking in your body. <laughs> and mm. depending on, on what it is and how it works, you could end up developing other blocks within your system because you've put that emotion in there and not dealt with it. So mm. being able to move through it, being able to understand, okay, I have a right to be angry. This person did this act, which I thought was unjust and uncalled for and unfair, and I am angry. Yeah, be angry. Right? Be yeah. angry because you've got every right to be. And then you've done your anger. <laughs> you've done. <laughs> the anger. You did anger today. Yeah. You did anger. And then what do I do with that? If you need to, you think about, okay, so what does this now mean? What do I need to do? Do I have to have a conversation to say, do you know what? I felt this when this happened. And I just want to express that. Do you need to let them know? Do you want to journal it? Do you want to talk to your therapist? Do you want to speak to somebody else about it? But it has, it has to come somewhere. It can't just sit in, in there, right? Obviously, there's time and place and appropriateness or whatever, but keeping it in and just keeping it in and just keeping it in is when you then start to get ill. Yes, yes. Right? The body, you know, it holds holds the keys, doesn't it, to all what's, what's been yeah. trapped. And what you want with any energy is to transmute it. So you want to move that energy through you, mm. right? Whether it's shock, grief, sadness whatever it is anger you experience it you feel it you acknowledge it you don't say yeah okay I'll deal with you later yeah okay ignore you (laughs) because moving on quickly yeah yeah, let's 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 carry on then carry on because what happens is that at some point you'll keep doing that and then it will not be you won't be able to ignore it anymore yeah it will come quite maybe in a more visceral way Uh, yeah I agree and and one of the other things I've seen and I'm sure you have as well is when if we block our emotions because the ones we don't like we actually start to block all the emotions so we can't feel the anger but we also can't feel the joy so you kind of flatline in the middle because you don't want to feel the joy because if you let the joy in then oh my goodness the anger is going to start making itself known and that's (laughs) why ignore it that's why we have all of it and also it's it is possible to grieve and still feel joy Mm. right it is possible to be happy and still have some sadness there. Even though they may be opposite emotions, it doesn't mean that you still can't experience it because it's written the same day. You know, you hear something, but it doesn't mean you can't laugh later on. It's, and sometimes people feel guilty about, oh, I shouldn't feel happy because this thing's happened. Well, that thing has happened and it may be incredibly sad, but if then somebody tickles you or something you love, it doesn't mean you should suppress that either. You're, you know, 
having healthy ranges of emotions and showing them are really good for us as human beings. Mm. And I know that when I suppress emotions, I get sick. Yeah. <laughs> I yes. get sick. Yes. Well, me too. I think that's you know, <laughs> that's probably some people, and I know our listeners are well versed in, in in this. So they'll be like, yep, completely resonating with what you're saying. But for, for those that are perhaps newer and are thinking, oh, I haven't actually made that connection between why I've suddenly got sick maybe it's at the same time of year and they're thinking it's just because of the bugs going around no it might be something that's happened in your lifetime you know previously exactly because our body holds absolutely everything Mm. everything that's ever happened our body will hold it and manifest it in different ways Mm. but it might even just be you've had a conversation with someone that's really upset you but you don't want to say anything because they're your sister or they're your mum or something like that and you're like how do I handle that and then you don't say anything and then suddenly you're in bed with flu yes. and you're like okay I've got flu but then you know the mind and body are connected <laughs> you know yeah, they're yeah. not two separate entities you know your pain and your illness is very real mm. but your mind will have a lot to say about it <laughs> it really it really will uh, one of the things that I I love is having cosmic conversations with people if you can't quite aren't in that place where you can have the real conversation to say I'm feeling x y and z but to just send it over the the cosmic wave so that you can you're intentionally letting it out and having that conversation even if it's not going to be you know heard on a 3d perspective yeah but you can do that and also Mm. just I like movement as well for our bodies um I don't know if you ever used to watch Grey's Anatomy Yes, a while ago now. A while ago. It's still on, apparently. Is it? Wow. (laughs) Season 25. (laughs) But one of the things that you do after a hard day would dance it out with their friends. Yeah. So sometimes we've got to move. So people go running or walking. Mm. You know, I dance in my kitchen. (laughs) And music is a great state changer as well. But sometimes we physically just need to release whatever's in our system. And that can be very excited and joyful to that. (laughs) As well as, you know, this is here. I'm feeling this in my system. Let's move mm. it. Let's physically move it from our system. Helps you stay well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I agree. I love movement. I love, we like dancing in our kitchen too. So <laughs> I think, uh, I wonder how many people in the pandemic took to dancing in their, dancing in their kitchen. That's It tastes better when we dance. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it's, you're filling it up with love, aren't you? And those high vibrations. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, my goodness. There's so much to, to, to uncover here for everybody and hope people have, you know, taking away nuggets of how they can improve their self-care and really start to actually recognise the importance of that. Now, now, I could talk to you for, for, for forever, so you'll have to, have to come back again. Um, but as we wrap up, you know, what, are, what would you say are the top three tips that you'd like to share with entrepreneurs in, in business? You may have covered, you know, some of these, of course, before, but just to kind of wrap up. These are probably I haven't covered because I'd say give yourself more grace. Right? Mm. We seem to think it's going to happen overnight or it's going to be quick. And anyone who's been in business for a while will tell you it's not. The overnight is the best of 10 years, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Give yourself grace, allow yourself to know that it may take longer and it's okay because your journey is not anybody else's journey. So that's the other thing. Do not compare yourself to anybody because the only person you're comparing yourself to is you. Um, you know, and you'll see people's Insta feeds like, why is my life not like that? Because there, there's isn't necessarily like that either. <laughs> right. Well, quite. It's amazing the illusions people create on on social media. Right. Mm-hmm. But you know, your journey is your journey. It may take longer, it may be shorter, it, it and it's not going to be a direct path, by the way. There's nothing linear about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> like that. Okay. Um, you know, zigzags up and down and spirals around the corner. And the last thing is get yourself some amazing people around you Mm. so have beautiful people that you can have discussions with about work life business everything um find I really don't it's not find your tribe is not really the same I particularly like very much but find the people that you align with that you resonate with that you connect with and get those people in your world who can be good advisors good um, companions and help you um, achieve your goals because we cannot do this journey on our own we really can't we really can't so whether it's mentors a collective whatever it is find someone somebody's ideally 
that can support you um and you will actually thrive and go faster you it's so true it's so true I see that so often with perhaps people who have just started their businesses not realizing the importance of that investment to make sure that they've got that support around them with a community where people are moving in the same direction yeah and and further ahead of you so that you've got the foresight to be able to, <laughs> yeah. their hindsight is your foresight yeah um yeah so so much wisdom here I love it I love it Yvette I know our listeners are going to want to stay connected with you how how can they find you where, where do you hang out <laughs> oh well I do I hang out on social media on occasion so <laughs> I'm on Instagram I've got a Facebook page and I'm on um LinkedIn so generally if you look for Yvette Ankara you'll find me on those platforms Perfect. Thank you. And we'll pop the links below the show notes as well. And I know you very generously have a free gift for our listeners. Do you want to tell everybody about that? Yes, it's my self-care guide for the dynamic woman. <laughs> so, oh, love it. <laughs> so in there, there's some hints and tips and different things you can think about. So I actually cover those areas of self-care that I mentioned and give you a little bit of insight into to what you can do to, to look at that. So you can start thinking about those areas of your life that you might want to improve. And if they're working well, how you can keep doing it. Yes, that's it. It's being able to keep the, the habit of being able to actually build up the momentum and the consistency. Because yes. it's amazing how many times people will say that they've stopped doing something when it started working. And they're like going... Why did I do that? <laughs> and I would say with that as well, if there's something that used to bring you immense joy and you've realised I haven't done that for a while, that's the thing that you might want to start doing. Oh, I love that. This is a call to action for everybody to go and find that thing that gives you immense yeah. joy. For me, it was reading novels because I was in the middle of a PhD for so long. It kind of novels were, you know, they were, I allowed myself to read a holiday, uh, holiday book and that was it. <laughs> Like, just one one a year just one, just one. And like, actually I like novels I enjoy reading and my work reading is different so I allow myself novels flashy sometimes I <laughs> build but I just love to read and yeah. I am I, you know missed reading for pleasure so important to be able to have that balance isn't it so that you're you're fulfilling your soul it's part of that filling the cup up isn't it exactly able to I love doing this I'm gonna allow myself to have more of this Mm. and one of the things that I I mean I doesn't you this we used to say this when I was back in the days when I was working with social services people were going I haven't got time to have a break so that means you need to have a break now exactly that (laughs) exactly that prioritize yourself you're more productive by the way when you take breaks so that lunch break is actually part of your business and part of your (laughs) self-care it's not just you know it's nice to have it's actually quite important I love it that's it's like a a business strategy your self-care rather than it feeling like a a a nice to have yeah and your business can fund it as well yes yes I love it. Financial tips too. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Yvette, it's been an absolute joy chatting to you. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your your wisdom with us today. Please come back. Oh, happy to. Thank you so much for having me, Louisa. It's been a pleasure. It's been wonderful. I encourage everybody to come and check out the links that Yvette has shared with us. Download your free gift and uh, go and hang out in Yvette's world. And to remember to... Prioritise your self-care. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear all your thoughts and insights. And please do come and join our conversation in the Money Kinesiology for Six and Seven Figure CEOs, which is on Facebook. And share your thoughts and insights from this episode there. And we will see you all very soon. So till our next episode, sending you all lots and lots of love. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.